بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله ومن وله Dear brothers and sisters, welcome to Inspired by Islam. May Allah bless us with this program. Inshallah, we are trying to inspire people to the positiveness. Also, I'm trying to you know, wake up their consciousness. Um, today, we have someone very special to me. Um, his name is Adila, and he's from Kazakhstan, and he's doing his PhD in Oxford University. And a very unique story he has. So, inshallah, you will enjoy it, and this will benefit lots of our uh, young people and also um, ones in middle age who doesn't practice. Uh, dear brother Adila, welcome to our show. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam. How are you today, my brother? I'm doing well today. I'm so sorry. I had to wake you up in the morning, 8.30. You actually yes. done, is it 6 30 you done journey from Oxford University? Well, around 7 o'clock, yeah. I woke up at 5.30 to prepare myself for the journey. So I was here. I arrived in London uh, at around 8.30. MashaAllah. May Allah bless your journey, my brother. Um, tell me about what you're studying at the moment and where you're studying. So I'm studying um, mathematics. Uh, that's a D-field program in uh, Oxford. And uh, uh, that's a three and a half years program. I'm funded by the Alan Turing Institute in London. So I spent the um, first part of my PhD uh, in London. Then I came, uh, moved to Oxford. Where were you born? Kazakhstan? Uh, Which yeah, part? I was, I was born and raised in Kazakhstan. I was Which born part? In, uh, in south east part of Kazakhstan in the city called Almaty. Um, you were born as a Muslim. Uh, so your parents are Muslim, right? My parents are Muslim, yes. Okay. It's but you done your Shahada when you were 18. That's right. This is quite unique. Why did you felt that you have to take Shahada or new beginning again for Islam? Why did you think you were not in Islam? Well, that's, that's a challenging question. Well, first of all, I think that I didn't have enough knowledge of Islam before Shahada. Um, and I felt that I, I had to take Shahada uh, because of the it's a spiritual experience, probably, um, that I felt. And, uh, and uh, my friends encouraged me to, to do so. So before you're 17, if you could describe that time, because I think there are millions of people are like that, confused, they don't have knowledge of Islam, they don't know what to do, they don't practice. For them, you could be a lesson for them. That's important. So before 17, what was going through your head regarding religion and the Creator? What was going through your head? Did you believe there is a Creator? Part of me believed that there was a Creator, but part of me was uh, inclined towards atheism. So, yeah, that, that was a kind of a... a, a struggle a within yourself. Yeah, it's, it was a... I wouldn't say it was a struggle. Okay. It was just a, a contradictory kind of a, a mind, mindset. Um, I was, I was, I was a, uh, or an ordinary teenager, and I would do things that ordinary teenagers do. I studied, but I was a diligent student. Um, I played video games, I played sports. Um, but I studied, uh, I, do, I did very best in my studies. When you say you were close to atheism, what does it mean? Did you think that universe was created by nothing? Doesn't the, was it something like this? When I say I was inclined towards atheism, I mean that... So my heart felt kind of a, um, admiration maybe for atheism. Uh, maybe because part, partly because of the uh, educational system I went through, like it, uh, we were taught that we are uh, we are descendants of primates, right? So that was kind of ingrained in in me, and I didn't have an alternative to replace that um, um, ideology. Okay, because nowadays I, I met lots of um, atheist people when it comes to street dawa and stuff. So as soon as they say there is no creator, as soon as they say that, when, when we talk back, when we reply them, there is an argument in the Quran, it's um, from Allah, mm -hmm. it's a divine book. So he says, when you ask a question like this, do you think the universe came from nothing? Or do you think you came from nothing? Can anything come from nothing? No, they can't. Absent of light, moon, sun, time, oxygen, anything, you won't get anything. 
So he asked those questions in the Quran. Then he said, Did you, do you think you created yourself? You can't create yourself. It's almost like uh, I was born myself. You can't create yourself. So universe can't come, come by yourself. Then he said, do you, do you think you created the universe? No, you don't. So all the no's are there. And then he says, that means there is a creator behind. So everything we know and everything we see, if I say to you, I found this in the street, but I think he, he created himself. No one created it. You never believe that. This, you never believe me. Why is it when it comes to universe, when it comes to sun and the moon and the thing, just because we don't know what's beyond that, we say, no, no, it came by itself. Is it, do you think it's a sensible question in the first place? It is a sensible question, yes. But you know, most people are not, uh, they're not brave enough, I think, to, un uh, to ask this question. And they are um, indulged in, um, in a mundane uh, life and they have w other worries. Uh, which they think are more important than this question. I think that occupies their minds, that th those uh, mundane things that you need to do every day in life. And uh, we just don't have time, the people just don't have time to, to ask these questions and uh, seek for the answers. Brother, you are actually in a seat where millions of people are there. I'm talking about Muslim community, I'm talking about um, people of other faith is different thing. Mm -hmm. Let's criticize the Muslim community here. Um, they're confused, young people are confused. Uh, mm -hmm. People around them, mostly non-believers. Um, within their, where they are, they're not being taught about Islam. Some cases are different. Some cases are different to teach them. But you took the brave step again. Um, there's two questions here. One is you took the brave question, now I want to declare my faith again. I genuinely believe that. That's your own faith. It's, you didn't follow blindly. That's, that's a beautiful thing, actually, again. You're not Muslim because your parents are Muslim. You're Muslim because you want to be Muslim. Mm -hmm. That's your choice. That's the lovely, honestly. Um, another thing is, why did you think... I'm, I'm sure you believe there is, a crea there is a God and there is prophets and all that. Why did you think you're not Muslim anymore? Why did you think that? Do you think you made a mistake thinking like that? Because millions of people are probably lazy Muslims, but they know there's God and there is no, there is a prophet, there is a Quran, there is a life after death, there is angels. You know, automatically people, because you are Muslim background. So before I took Shahada, um, uh, I didn't have a, a firm kind of a ideology in my heart and in my mind. Right? Everything was mixed. Atheism, atheistic ideology, uh, part of me believed in God. So I had to kind of uh, clear myself mm -hmm. from the, the filth I had in my heart and in my mind. So I, looking back into, my, uh, into, my, into the past... Um, would you, would you blame anyone? Would you blame anyone for that? Would you blame anyone for that, that they didn't teach you? The community uh, level? No, I, I wouldn't blame anyone because my parents and my grandparents, they uh, were born in the Soviet era, Soviet Union. Okay. And so th th that, that country, uh, one of its doctrines is atheism, and they were kind of influenced by, the, by, the, uh, by that doc doctrine. When you done Shahada, were they pleased with you, your parents? Uh, they actually, is that what I they wanted, or they thought it's when, okay? When I told my parents, I didn't say to them that I took Shahada. I, say t I said to them, I will start praying. That's huh. what I said. Was he happy? I'm sure parents are always happy. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, they weren't very happy. They weren't very happy. Because, uh, Why? Is that a because problem? Because they felt, I assume they felt that that would bring um, uh, bad ramifications. Like, you know, you need to pray five times a day. You will, uh, you will dedicate more time to prayers. You, don't, you won't have time to study. And those fears, I think, um, they kind of made them... Um, feel a bit, um, a, a bit disappointed. Okay. Do you think they worried or do you think that time people are worried, a lot of picture comes into head. When you say I'm becoming practicing, the picture doesn't come like, is it going to be extremist? Is it going to be one of them? You know, th th that pi does that picture come into uh, Muslim mind? Like your parents or grand? Do, do you think they or thought in thinking uh, might think be one of them? I think that, yeah, that came. There is a chance. There, there is, is a, a chance. chance, yes. Okay. This is the biggest problem we have, you know, like, um, especially in the media regarding Muslim and Islams, 
uh, what they're showing about these guns. These guns are uh, uh, politically minded. They actually want to um, get the power in their own countries. And they're using Islam as a tool just to you know, rectify their mistakes and whatever. I, I, that's what I think. This is nothing to do with Islam. It's peace of Islam. They took it out of the context. Mm -hmm. And they're going after uh, th those names are being used. My brother, um, what was going through your mind? Um, okay, I'm going to go to Shah Shahada after, before that. What was going through your mind? What did, you, did you ever thought that, um, why am I here? What was I created by? Is there any purpose of my life? Like you're wearing a shirt, it's got a purpose. You got a trousers on. It's got a purpose. Your eyes has a purpose. L sun has a purpose. We all say that. What is your purpose? Did you ever thought like that? I have a purpose. Am I here for some reason? I actually had that kind of uh, questions in my mind, and that was, um, and th those questions appeared when I was a child. I remember that when I was like five or six years old. I was thinking, I, I was, I remember I was thinking about the universe, I was thinking about the world, and it would, uh, I would feel something uh, beautiful inside me because of those uh, thoughts. But uh, then, uh, s you know, school time, um, um, so basically I got involved in dunya stuff, in mundane stuff, and I, my, my heart and my mind uh, was uh, spoiled because of that, I think. Okay, tell me about your f day you done your Shahada. Tell me about that day, the experience of that day, if you could describe it. Your feelings, your emotions, your seeing things, if you could describe it. Because remember, you're putting the Tawheed in your heart. It's all like your SIM card in your heart, in, a, in, in a phone. And now you're going to connect. Okay. How was that feeling? Hmm. I think that, so uh, we're talking about the spiritual experience, right? Yeah. So spiritually, I, um, I felt a spiritual light before I took Shahada. Okay. So Could that lead you to the Shahada? Which le led me to Shahada, yes. And that actually uh, spiritual light came to me like three months before taking Shahada. And that, that was... What happened? Tell me that, that, that thing, okay. what happens, right. your feelings. So basically, um, one of my friends, uh, so I, I was studying at the university, I was living in the dormitory with, uh, and living with three of my other friends. And two of them were practicing, and two of uh, me and my close friend uh, were not Muslims. So basically, uh, one of the practicing brothers, he asked me to go to Juma, right? And he asked as well my, my, my uh, other friend. So we agreed uh, because he indulged us to, uh, to go to cinema after Juma. So we went to Juma and we came back, nothing happened. But next Juma came, he asked us again. My friend, he, he said no. And I, I, was, hesitate, I was hesitant and, uh, and he asked me another question. Are you, do you, are you busy? And I was thinking whether to, to lie or to say the truth. And I said the truth, I, th I said, I'm not busy. And so I had no excuse not to say, not, uh, not to say no. So I, I went to Juma, and uh, that Juma was decisive, I think, because I uh, was involved. I was I was in the prayer, kind of. I decided to uh, feel the to feel the God, basically, to feel Allah, to to be conscious that I'm standing in front of Him, and that that Juma changed my life. And I, I remember, I think, uh, if I remember correctly, after that Juma, I, s I felt a uh, spiritual need, spiritual experience to uh, become a Muslim, proper Muslim. Um, which position, w can I, I know it's, it's a silly one probably, which position were you um, that you really felt God or you felt something's changing? Was it on a sujood? Were you standing or what position was it? Uh, it was sujood. Sujood. Yes. Because you know, like the, the Prophet said, this is the best position and make lots of dua when you're in a sujood because you're showing your humbleness mm -hmm. and you're saying you, the God is the greatest mm -hmm. and He is the high. Subhanahu Rabbi Al A'la, He is the highest. Um, after that, you were looking for you done the Shahada. Um, after you done the Shahada, um, how was it for you? Was it positive or negative after you done your shahada? Because there are a lot of responsibility came into it. 
-hmm. Once you've done the Shahada, you, know, you have to pray, you have to give charity, you have to love your neighbors. These are acts to do it. You know, you, you look after your parents, it doesn't matter what they are, you know, there is no blindness anymore. You have to pray for them. It's your duty now. You're looking after them, praying for them, you know, making dua for them. It's now you become the duty of a slave of Allah. You know, when it comes, when, you, when we declare he's our master, now he have to do what you do. So that was a big thing, a big change for you too. Um, were you, before the Shahada, were you drinking? Were you going to anything you done uh, womanizing? Anything before? No, to be honest, I you was, never been uh, like that. I, 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 I ha didn't have problems with alcohol. I didn't smoke, uh, but I played uh, a lot of video games. Well, they, so that was one of the my okay. uh, <laughs> bad, bad kind of sites. But uh, after I took Shahada, and after a while, after a few years, I got rid of that addiction. Okay, inshallah. But they tell me you're, um, now you did run the Shahada, mashallah. You were always Muslim anyway, to be honest with you. It's always been a Muslim thing. Uh, because you did believe there's a creator, you did believe there is a prophet, you did believe. But it probably didn't make sense to you because there was an explanation probably. That wasn't, that wasn't making the sense, maybe. And then to come out of Islam is not easy as well. You have to deny it. Being lazy is, is one thing. Not practicing is one thing. But to deny something, that it is an existence of God, and deny the Qur'an, or deny all these things, the sixth belief, then you be openly, has to be, a, you know, openly and publicly as well. Mm -hmm. Because uh, Allah, you know, he, He's a merciful, and He looks, looks for, uh, uh, He wants us to be, you know, in, in a salvation. He wants us to get salvation. So He's given us, uh, whatever many years He's given us, the only thing He says, come back to me, and say sorry, and you're fine. Repentance. You're fine. Anyone, even if, even if you do any, any kind of sin you can do, but you always can go back to God. And you go, it's really simple, easy, and, and, and perfectionist. Um, you know, when we say um, prayer is the connecting with God, I want to hear from you because you're, you came from clean slate. I was born, I was prayed before, but you came from a clean slate. That how was your prayer changed you? Because Quran says prayer changes you away from the munkar and, and fahishat, like uh, all the bad things. How did that change you? Hmm. Can you explain it spiritually? Spiritually? Yeah. What happens when you start praying? What happens? I'm, I'm not in the beginning process. What happens? Do you feel enjoy? Do you feel like going and doing good things? Uh, right after I took shahada. Yeah. Uh, in the inis initial stages um, of me being a Muslim, I remember one, uh, one moment when I really felt uh, a good kind of a feeling inside me, spiritual experience. I wanted to pray more, you know, I had a uh, desire to pray more, and, but that degraded over time. That's normal, you, it yeah. goes up and down. Do you, cry, do you ever cry in your prayers? And it's not for sure, but because I'm asking you, I know you don't want to show it. But I want to, people to understand your heart. I want them to understand, just to share it. Did you ever cry in your prayers? Did I ever cry? Yes, I did. How? <laughs> yes, Why I did. do you cry? You can't help it. Um, well, there, I think there are different reasons. Uh, do you cry when you're reading Quran in the prayers? Or do you cry when you think about God? What, what happens? Well, every prayer is different, I would say. Uh, uh, sometimes I cry when I pray Quran, uh, when I read Quran. Subhanallah. Uh, when I kind of get into the meaning. Give me an example. <laughs> give me an example. Um, Which part of the Quran we're reading? Because I'll, tell you, I'll give you an example. When I, was, when I became practicing, I was away from the religion myself. First time I read Quran in, 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 in English. Mm -hmm. I want you to understand that. In Arabic, uh, I don't understand, I can't read it. Surah Baqarah, um, first, um, second ruku. When Allah was talking about the um, 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 the ayah, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُ آمَنَّ بِاللَّهِ وَبِالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَمَهُمْ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ That there are some people who actually say that I, am, I believe in the Akhirah, I believe in God. But the next line he said, no, they don't believe it. Because they don't mean it. I tell them not to do corruption in the land, but they do it, but they don't realize it. And when, when, when those lines are going, and I stopped. I just, it just, I just freezed. 
And I thought God was talking about me. Honestly, I thought he was talking to me, saying, you're a hypocrite. Honestly, that's what I thought. How does he, and I was, I was saying, how does he know about me? I'm doing, because I didn't mean it. I, if I meant it, I would, have, I would have practiced. And I stopped. I couldn't read anymore. I stopped. I, I stopped everything and I just said, mm -hmm. I'm not going to read it today anymore. I can't take it. I just, it shake me. Yeah, I, I, I understand that. I noticed that uh, whenever I cry, it, it's something, uh, when I read Quran, it, it is usually something that relates to me personally, which makes me emotional. For example, in Surah Ad-Duha, where uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that you were born uh, orphan. orphan, then we, we adopted you, we, we gave you a shelter, then you were uh, misguided and we gave you guidance, and you were poor and we made you rich. That kind of relates to me as well, a bit. <laughs> rich means spiritually rich, yeah. Because he was always been poor in the, in, in the worldly uh, level. Um, another time, actually, after <laughs> I, I remember, um, I was reading Quran, mm -hmm. and um, Allah was saying, why are you worshipping something I created? Doesn't benefit nothing for you. What are the reasons? You, whatever you're worshipping, he's talking about mushrikeen, whatever you're worshipping, Show me what he created in the universe. Show me something. What reason do you have to pray to that creation of mine? Some people are praying to a stone. Some people are praying to the human. Some people are praying themselves. You know, they're worshipping themselves. Whatever you're worshipping, show me that something he created. Which part of the creation he done it? And how do you worship that thing? And, and he, he just stuck me in the sense of the humans are so intelligent but they're worshipping something is already created. He's dependent on something. Mm -hmm. Dependent on something. He depends on sleep, depends on eating, depends on his shelter, it depends on everything. He can't help it. And how can we leave the creator who is eternal, ever-loving, merciful, all-knowing, to worship something he created? How do we make, I made, this t I made this cup. How can I be the same as this cup? You worship my cup, not me. You can you imagine that? And I felt so, I don't know if it's, if it's uh, what word to you. I just felt so miserable. So, you know, when we go through the Quran, especially with the meaning, Wallahi, it's, it's, it's amazing. My brother, we don't have much time. Honestly, I wanted to go on and on with you. Hopefully, I will do another one. Um, what kind of dua, okay, another, another personal one I'm asking, what kind of dua you make for your parents? Because they, honestly, they, they are our, we come through them, you know, they are a special people. After a worshipping creator, we, we love our parents. That's how they are. And I'm sure, of course, you love them. How, how much prayer you make dua you make for them? <sighs> When I remember them in du'a, I usually make du'a for them. And uh, um, I ask Allah to guide them to the true path, to show that, uh, to change their hearts, um, and uh, to display Islam as something that is uh, good. To change their hearts that, such that Islam is presented for them as, uh, as something good, not as something bad. My brother, you are actually um, do, uh, doing PhD in Oxford. So mostly people from that place, when they go out, they become a, a leaders, or they become a something really, really big. So you are example for Islam, or you are actually representing as a as a as a Muslim person or Islamic person. And our duty is to show the beauty of Islam. It's an amazing religion, and it's, it's been hijacked by extremist, terrorist, politics. Um, Islamophobias, whatever you would name them. So it's our job to show the beauty of Islam. Um, I, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Please make dua for the Ummah. It's, it's the time we make dua for them and show them or at least tell them that wake up, wake up. 
our job to make the world beautiful, not destroy it. And thank you for, again, would you like to say your last word to our viewers, anything for our young people are watching? Sure. Um, I would say be sincere with God and uh, Allah will help you. And if you are afraid to start the prayer, start praying, fasting, then don't be afraid because Allah will help you in this life and the hereafter. Thank you, for, uh, thank you again for your time for us. Dear brothers and sisters, um, we don't have much time, like always, uh, we want to share a lot of things with you guys. Um, millions of people are, are watching wherever you are, uh, my brothers. We have to make a, a, a decision um, that am I a believer? If I'm not a believer, why am I not believing? Let's read Quran, like the brother said, in every time he reads Quran, he cries. Even for me, it stacks. Read Quran in the way you understand Quran. It's an amazing book. This is a divine book. And it kept, as Allah promised, from the time of the Prophet up to now, exactly the same wording. Everything is the same. There is no other book in the earth that kept in that manner. May Allah bless uh, the Islam and everybody who follows and who don't follow. May Allah show them their truth and the guidance. Um, if we said anything wrong, please do forgive us. And we love you all and hope to see you again. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.